prayer is communion with God, fellowshipping with God, getting to know Him better. But do you realize that if you have a wrong perception of a person, it affects the kind of relationship you have with them? So many Christians are wondering, why are my prayers not answered? I'm finding it difficult to consistently trust God. You know, I need God to manifest, to show off himself. And many of such Christians run from meetings to meetings looking for signs and wonders, miracles and miracles. But virtually everything that they are looking for in their life are things that they can receive firsthand through a strong relationship and fellowship with the Father. Now, we can't blame many of such Christians because many of us were brought up from a religious background and God was painted to us. Um, I mean, the picture of God painted to us was a wrong picture. It's not a picture of who exactly he is. So many of us have a wrong understanding about the true nature of God. And some people, negative circumstances, you know, consistent negative uh, circumstance event occurrence in their life has made them to think you know what God must be like this you know he must have allowed these things to happen to me for you know because he is awesome and there's this problem about God being sovereign the sovereignty of God yes God is sovereign but uh, God is not the orchestrator of evils in our life now let's take a few uh, instances of uh, events that or situations that happen in people's life that make people to see God in a different light, different light, different to what he actual, who he actually is. The, the, the loss of a child in the family. So if a family loses a child, maybe a child dies, you know, you know, maybe a pastor may have visited them and said, you know what, uh, God give it and God take it. But Jesus says in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, that the, is the, the enemy, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have in abundance. Now the Bible tells us that when God gives, it does not take. Even now, talking about the giftings of mindset, the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. The book of James talks about God. James chapter 1 describes God as the giving God who gives to all liberally without finding fault. So God does not give and take. Right. Another situation is um, maybe someone lose their marriage, maybe their marriage did failed because uh, because they were not, re- maybe at that time, they were not really uh, serving in their local church. You know, pastors may have told them or their mind may have told them that, you know, uh, God made this happen so that he can get my attention. But Jesus says that, you know, uh, what God has joined together, let no man separate them, let no man put asunder. And the Bible said to us in the book of Malachi that God hates divorce. So God wants husbands and wives to be together, to be a model of a relationship between himself, between Christ and the church, to kind of demonstrate kindness towards mankind. I mean, I don't want to go into marriage. So what I'm trying to say is that if God is for marriage, then it cannot be, you know, it, it, it can use a negative circumstance in that context to try to draw his, your attention to him. On that example is poverty. Some people believe that God wants them to be poor because he wants to keep them humble. And many churches believe that the pastor, the clergy must be poor so that he can be humble. And they have a problem with some pastors and preachers living a prosperous lifestyle. Now, I'm not advocating covetousness or the exploitation we see in the church today. But if anyone is serving God, they ought to live a prosperous lifestyle. I mean, I mean live prosperously, live in prosper- prosperity, pardon me. Now, for John 2, about him. Apostle John was speaking by the Spirit of God. It says, God, which above all things that we may prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. The Bible tells us that in the book of 2 Corinthians 9, 8, that God is able to make His grace abound towards us, that we having sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. So God wants us to have abundance, right? So, uh, you know, we need to be careful how we see God, you know, based on the events in our life. So, but why, but how do we get over this? How do we renew our mind about our perception about God? One thing I could say is that 
we should look at Jesus. I'm so glad that God sent us a representative that is in the person of Jesus Christ. Before I go deeper, I wanted to take some few seconds to ask yourself, you know, how do I perceive God? Do I have a relationship with Him? When I pray, is my prayer a, a religious activity, a religious exercise, or is it communion, fellowship, and rapping with God, fellowship with God, and stuff like that? So I thank God that He uh, has sent us Jesus Christ. And the, the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 3, says that Jesus is the exact representation of God, the exact copy of of God. Jesus said in John 10 30, he said, myself and my father are one. John chapter 14 verse 10. Okay, verse 9 he says, whoever have seen me, I've seen the father. Verse 10 he says, you know, he said the miracles, the signs and wonders, the, the great things, the miracles, the healing that happens, you know, to, to, through me, I'm not the one who would do them. My father in heaven does them, right? So if God is walking through Jesus to heal, to heal the sick, raise the dead, I don't understand. So if God is abstract to many of us or is very distant or we can't figure him, we can't understand him, then I want to challenge you to begin to look at the life of Jesus. I want a typical example of, uh, of, a, of a negative perspective that people have of God is in the area of sickness and diseases. So people, because maybe their auntie had cancer, died of cancer, or some people, they have had this prolonged sickness and disease, in their life so they say you know what well, uh, God must be teaching me a lesson or he wants to draw my attention to something he wants to teach me a lesson he wants to calm me down say I've been I've, I've suffered stress I've suffered anxiety I've suffered uh, I've experienced depression in, in various forms and levels and I can say to you that they were self-inflicted and they had nothing to do with God and if God was putting those things on us so how can we, why, 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 why do we pray about it? Why do we pray that God should heal us if we put it on us? Or why do we go to doctors? So if the sickness or disease is the will of God for our life, going to the doctors or taking medication must be, must be an act of violating the will of God. And you know, as a Christian, a child of God, you don't want to be violating the will of God, right? Or do you? Right. So people, because of sickness and disease that's prolonged or instances or preachers, what preachers have said and stuff like that, they just see God as the one bringing sickness on people. No, but look at what Jesus, look at life of Jesus here. Now, Acts 10, 38 says, how, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. So, which means God was with Jesus and doing good. God is good. The Bible said, tells us in the book of James, that every good, James 1 17, every good and perfect gift is from above. The Father of light is from God. So God gave good gifts, He doesn't give bad gifts. And Jesus even said, He said that, you know, if you, heavenly fathers, could give uh, good, good things to your children, how much more a Father in heaven, if you wicked fathers, ungodly fathers, could, could give good gifts, He was speaking to the unsaved people then. Is how much more our Father in heaven give us much more good, better things than what an heavenly Father can give to their children. So if you really want to understand God and start developing your relationship with God, and if you really want to grow in your faith in God, if you really want to have this intimate, non intimate, ex intimate knowledge, experience, or intimate relationship with God, then I want to challenge you to get your Bible and start finding out who God is so simple look at the life of jesus everything you see jesus do then god is doing everything jesus will not do god will not do i want to i want you to be free and be confident to talk to god now you may be seeing yourself as a sinner you are not a sinner saved by grace you were a sinner saved by grace second corinthians 5 17 says that if any man anybody any man or woman Come to Christ Jesus. Accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Say they have become a new species, a new person. The old person, the old man or renewed man is gone away and now they're a new person. Now, when God looks at you, because you are in Christ Jesus, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. See, your righteousness cannot save you. Your righteousness is not enough. You cannot be righteousness by your actions enough for God to accept you. 
The righteousness of man cannot stand anything. It's only the righteousness of Jesus that qualifies us to have access and fellowship with the Father. So if you are in Christ Jesus, do not see yourself as a sinner anymore, but see yourself as a child of God. See yourself as a brother or sister of Jesus Christ. Now, your old self, Romans 6, 6, you can take your time to read it. Your old, unrenewed self, your sin nature has been taken away, nailed on the cross. Now you carry the very gene of God. The Bible says in the book of John 1, 12, that you are born of God, not of the will of man, but by the Spirit of God. You are a new species, a new being. So wake up right now. Stand up right now. Rejoice that you are a child of God. And a child of God, regardless of what you do, God will not disown you because you carry his DNA. Hallelujah. No longer see yourself as a sinner. Find out who God is. Pick up your Bible. Look for sound teachers to help you out. I have a friend, Pastor Dai Babalala. He can help you how you have access to him. Uh, the guys that I follow... Uh, Andrew Womack, Kenne Hagen, Andrew Womack and um, Pastor Dwayne Sheriff have resources on their website that really help you, you know, to get to know God better and see God who it truly is. God loves you so much and he cares so much about you. But until you begin to find out who God truly is, you may not be able to grow in your fellowship and your relationship with him. And your prayer life may not become vibrant. But if you want to have a vibrant, productive prayer life and relationship with God, find out who it truly is by looking at who Jesus is.